Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Mathematicians, welcome back to another day of Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar. Advent Calendar, whatever, something pronunciation, something. Really doesn't matter how you pronounce it. The really important thing is if you understand it and you do understand the Papa, otherwise, you probably wouldn't watch my videos. We are going to do an uh, improvised session today. It's going to involve a cute little series involving the Riemann Zeta function. I think it's going to be kind of easy, so perfect for the Advent calendar. <laughs> But before we get started, don't forget 10 to 15% of everything at my personal Teespring shop and also 10% of all chaotic double pendulums over on STEM Merge. They are so much fun to toy with. They are great. Uh, yeah, check it out. Link in the description. And now we are going to dive right in. So the series we are going to take a look at today is the following one. Namely, we are going to have an infinity boy. Ugh, that's an ugly sigma interpreter, sorry. Where n is greater or equal to 1. So it's bonded between 1 and infinity um, of Riemann zeta of 2n divided by 2 to the 2n minus 1 power. Yes, and there we go. This is what we are going to take a look at today. And I already have a bunch of things in mind. So the first thing you might notice is that 2 to the negative 1 power is one half. So meaning we are going to have one over one half, which is going to result in two. So this is probably a good simplification that we can do. Okay, so we got rid of that. Also, we got zeta in here, meaning we can turn this into a serious representation. Um, leaving us with two times the infinity boy, where n is greater or equal to one of, and now we have one over two to the two nth power. Then we have yet another infinity boy where k looks like n and n looks like limit and limit looks like sine. So we are going to go for an r where r is greater or equal to 1. Riemann zeta starts at 1 of 1 over r to the 2 nth power. And this is cool. This is kind of cool. I mean, both have to the 2 nth power. So let us, yeah, let us bring the series to the front basically. And let's just bring those two together. Those two are going to result in an argument of 1 over... Okay, this is going to give us 2r to the 2 nth power. Um, let me think for a second. So what we could do is we could interchange those two integrals basically, those two series. And then what you would have is is on the inside a series where n is greater or equal to 1 of 1 over 2r to the something to the nth power. So this right here is also everything to the nth power and this just screams for geometric series. So interchanging those two integrals. Um, let me think for a second what we would need to do is we would need to do a change of index such that we start at 0. Uh, no, we don't need this. We can just add a zero to this whole thing to get the geometric series out. But is it convergent? So is this in the radius of convergence? Riemann zeta converges for... Yeah, th this right here doesn't matter. N is strictly positive, so it converges for those values. This is not a problem. And R is greater or equal to 1, meaning this argument right here is greater or equal to... So down, down here the denominator is greater or equal to... 4, so meaning this right here is bounded between 0 and 1, meaning the geometric series would converge. Um, it's just a matter of rewriting things, if I could even rewrite it, leaving us with 2 times. Okay, this is 2 times, and then we have the first series. I'm going to interchange those two right here, okay, because I can. Let's say we are going to Fubini the shit out of um, those two integrals, and then we are going to have this infinity boy where n is greater or equal to 1 of 1 over and 2r squared is going to give us 4r squared and this whole thing to the nth power. Now this right here is going to turn kind of into a geometric series thing. Geometric series is starting at 0, meaning the 0 of term is missing, which is going to be 1 by definition. So overall we have to add a 1 and subtract it. So what we have here basically is going to turn into a geometric series in the argument being 1 over 4 times 
r squared, exactly, not just 4r squared, but 1 over 4r squared, and then we still have a negative 1 lying around. Meaning overall, this is going to turn into 2 times an infinity boy where r squared or equal to 1 of, and now let me see, um, we have 1 minus 1 over 4r squared, this is looking ugly, minus 1. This should work out, I think. And now we can go ahead and simplify some things. I mean, we can add those two together, meaning we're going to expand the 1 by uh, 1 minus 1 over 4r squared over 1 minus 1 over 4r squared. I could probably have just expanded this fraction by 4r squared over 4r squared to get rid of this right here. But maybe, uh, no, um, we can track the negative sign into here. Okay, and hence this one and negative one is going to cancel out, leaving us overall with, okay, we are going to get 1 over 4r squared times 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over 4r squared. If we were to track this 4r squared into the denominator, we are just going to get 1 divided by 4r squared minus 1. That, that's a very nice simplification. And even better than this is the fact that this right here, I, I could have let it be like this because that way it would be more obvious. This right here is 2r squared, meaning we have the difference of two squares down here, leaving us with 1 over, hmm, okay, we're going to have 2r minus 1, 2r plus 1. Okay, this right here is a famous telescoping series. I, I, I mean, you can already see that it's going to telescope in some way. Only thing we need to do is partial fraction decomposition to make it actually work. Let me take a look at that for a second. What would we need? Um, so we need something of the form 1 over 2r minus 1 plus minus 1 over 2r plus 1, probably. If we have a plus, then that wouldn't work out because we would get the r yet again up here. That's not something that we want because we don't have an r factor up here in the numerator, meaning we should probably go for a negative sign, leaving us with, okay, our denominator obviously after expanding and 2r plus 1 minus 2r plus 1. This and that is going to cancel out. Oh, this is cool, this is very cool. So we are going to get 2 over the denominator and 2 is exactly what we're having here. Meaning overall, if we were to track the 2 onto here, okay, getting the 2 into here, we are going to end up with a series over just those two summons. Ah, oh, this is cool over this difference. Leaving us with having creator equal to 1 of, okay, 1 over 2r minus 1, minus 1 over 2r plus 1. Okay, and this shall be easy, I think. If we plug 1 into here, let us just see um, how it's going to telescope. We are going to get 1 over 2 minus 1 is just 1, 1 over 1, minus, and this should be 3, 1 over 3, 1 third, and then plus. Okay, 2 into here, this is going to give us 2 times 2 minus 1 is 3, yeah, 1 third, and then we are going to probably get 1 fifth plus 1 fifth, blah, 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 leaving us with, yeah, as always with those series, just being 1. And this should settle the deal. That was a fun little problem, very cute. I like problems like this. Um, all that's really missing for this to work is the argumentation why you can interchange those two integrals. But I suppose you can use some kind of measure theoretic Fubini stuff or monotone convergence theorem because um, all the elements in this integral right here, so all the members are actually strictly positive. Maybe you can do something like this. But here, yeah, I don't know, I don't care. It, Seems like it worked out and that's all that really matters. Um, I'm going to check the four from Alpha if this uh, was right. And I thank you guys for watching. If you didn't enjoy this day of the Advent Calendar, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to check out Stanford seriously. Those are really cool and they are very nicely gelagert. Okay, very nice ball bearings. If you really make it stationary at a wall, they are going to spin for ages. Um, it's, it's kind of fidget spinner-like. And, and what you can then do is... Um, just kind of hit it here. And yeah, very cool. You're going to get this nice chaotic behavior. I love those things, they are so great. I, I just love how they behave and it's a lot of fun. And I'm still waiting for my big double pendulum. That's going to be even way more fun. The coolest thing about double pendulums is actually that it seems like they are gaining energy from nowhere. So they, they suddenly do a 360 without any um, real 
real, I don't know, um, notice or something. It's, it's, it's just weird how they behave and I love that opinion. Never mind. So yeah, check, check damage out and whatsoever. I think that's watching it on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. I'm into the next Advent calendar day. I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao. <laughs>